Uh, my name is Tim Ward. Uh, I'm an engineer at a company out of Copenhagen, Denmark called Clued In. Uh, I'm originally from Australia, but uh, I moved to Denmark essentially to, to work with a good group of people, engineers. Um, my uh, background is mainly in engineering. I've been a software engineer for 12 years. Typically quite a polyglot developer, trying different platforms out. And uh, that's really what brought us to Neo4j, a different type of technology that was worth investigating. So at uh, Cluden, we take a very polyglot design to our um, technology stack. So we actually use a whole different variety of different databases. And the, the way that we use Neo4j is actually as our primary data store. It's really based off this idea uh, or ethos that we have the connected data is always more interesting than disconnected data, um, especially when you're wanting to do something like uh, we do where we're integrating data automatically from different systems. It requires this kind of database where context and, and, and the graph theory itself and the design patterns that are in it um, are really just you know necessary for solving this problem to a higher precision than the other types of technologies we're used to. So I started Neo4j um, close to yeah close to six years ago, um, and I started on a very kind of early 1.5 release, and um, I think the the interesting reason we were looking in the graph space um, was because of the new possibilities and engineering techniques it gave us, you know, to work with a different data structure that solves problems that, you know, inherently other data stores you would typically bend to solve the same problem. Um, and I think that the three kind of main points why we chose Neo were its ability to you know, join across huge amounts of, of data, no matter the, the kind of depth of the connection. The next was the pattern matching technique, uh, techniques, and uh, finally it was actually the, the kind of path traversals, the ability for us to kind of take two discrete nodes that were in our graph and to reverse engineer the connections uh, between those two data points. Neo4j, of course, uh, for us, uh, when we were looking in, in the market, it just seemed like the obvious choice. It had a fantastic company behind it. It had a lot of growth. It had some funding, which we knew that could, you know, that, that technology could get the right, uh, the necessary attention that needed to fulfill the graph story. So I think uh, that and the combination of uh, it integrating well with our stack and having the APIs available for us to work with it in, a, in an agnostic way, no matter what libraries we were using or languages, really helped it an easy choice for us to, to choose Neo. So I think uh, the most interesting results um, that we've had were our scale story. So our story of how we started off with you know 15 customers and how we grew it to a, a database of 280 million nodes right now with close to a billion vertices or edges in the graph and I think I think uh, what surprised us and that also challenged us was the resilience behind the platform and that being a generic graph model you could really you know take control of the platform in the parts where potentially focus was needed from the product especially around things like indexing and, and, and scaling uh, using a, a schema instead of, you know, we went through this kind of um, era in the NoSQL area where, you know, no schema was, was something that was sold as like a big uh, plus. And what you really realize when you go to production is that, well, a scheme is actually something that's extremely necessary and that uh, our ability in Neo to be able to influence how the core platform actually work with things like indexing. I think it was the flexibility that surprised us in a very kind of positive manner. I think what we realize after time is that, well, there are some odd things that you might need to do with your model to cater for some of these uh, scalability uh, type of complexities that come. And to be honest, uh, only really show themselves when you are in production at huge read and write levels, uh, concurrent read and write levels, and you know you're you're also dealing with such a, a diverse amount of data that's not necessarily fitting all into the same model. We work, you know, with different customers' data, and one customer's industry looks completely different to the data from another industry, and the ability to have a model where at a later point, we could bend and, and, and change. Um, I think that was one of the things we would probably revisit, but I mean, in, in hindsight, I mean, uh, maybe we wouldn't have discovered that if we didn't go with our original easy way of modeling the data. 
we're on a very similar mission to Neo4j. We're, we're wanting to connect the enterprise and we're using a lot of the same you know, techniques uh, that, that Neo4j is, is also saying that's in their vision. I mean, using machine learning techniques as well. So where we see really the market going is that a lot more people are adopting graphs as just one of the extra types of databases you can use to solve problems. And I think where it's going is that the application of machine learning combined with things like the graph to be able to kind of produce results where companies can actually start to utilize their data properly. They can become data driven and, you know, we can get out of these kind of archaic ways of, you know, manually integrating systems in a very tedious and uh, manual approach and move towards, you know, a company's data telling us how things are connected. Maybe even the fact that models in the future for the graph will be inferred from the data instead of the other way around. So I'd like to see that's where it will go. Uh, I mean, my final thoughts would be that I think Graph Connect is a fantastic way to, you know, uh, talk to the, the people from the product team, to give them feedback from the field. Um, I think there's huge value in being able to, you know, take our huge uh, production environment and talk to the, the actual engineers that can change those things, that can actually make a tangible um, impact on allowing companies like us to be able to scale to you know some of the biggest companies in the world and um, so I think that's kind of priceless.